In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a one sample t test in Microsoft Excel. We're in the file 12, 13, 1, and 2 sample t test. So, the one sample t test is about taking data from one sample. One of the other prerequisites you need to know is that you have to have interval level variables to do this type of analysis. Okay, so I've written the five steps here. We'll be going through each of these in turn. And looking down here, um, I've given you the data from last time in the previous video about the number of cookies that people leave out for Santa. And if you recall from last time, our confidence interval from the previous video was that we were 95% certain that the average number of cookies that people in the U.S. leave out for Santa is between 8.06 and 8.42 cookies. Now the question here is given the same sample data for people in the U.S. and now also adding some population means from other countries, do Americans differ from people in other countries in terms of how many cookies they leave out for Santa? So this is the perfect example of how to use the one sample t-test. We have sample information, so I've already put this here for you. We did this last time, so there's no need to recalculate this information. Our data is down here, and it's already we've already done all the filtering, etc., etc. Um, if you want to review that, you can review the previous video. So we have sample information. We have a sample mean. This is for people in the U.S. This is our sample data here, people in the U.S. And we have population means for other countries. So we're essentially doing, we're trying to estimate whether the population mean of the U.S. differs from these population means. We're interested in a hypothesis test at the alpha equals 0 0.05 level of significance. So the first step is to write out our hypotheses and we're going to do two-tailed tests because the question is asking us do Americans differ from people in other countries on average. Americans differ from in this particular case here, we'll talk about Canadians in terms of how many cookies they leave out for Santa, period. Now you'll note that again, the information is all right here, so don't put it other places, don't like write on average, and then type into this cell Americans, and then differ from Canadians. That's a mess. It's all right here in this one cell. So don't be putting it in really weird places. Even though you can't see it on the screen, once you click on the cell, it's all there. Okay, so don't do anything unusual. It'll make it much more difficult for yourself later on. And also, I'm asking you to write out the symbolic notation for this. So just for convenience, I'll just write U instead of mu. So if you would like, you can go up to insert symbols and find mu. But our research hypothesis is that mu is not equal to mu. And in particular, we want to say that the average number of cookies that Americans leave out for Santa is not equal to the average number of cookies that Canadians leave out for Santa. Okay, so these two cells are saying the same exact thing, but I'm asking you to write it out in words and in symbols. Now, the null hypothesis is just the opposite of this. So I'm just going to copy this, Control C, and I'm going to paste it right here, Control V. The only thing we have to change now is that Americans do not differ from Canadians in terms of how many cookies they leave out for Santa. And in this case that would mean that they are equal. 
Now that we have our hypothesis set up, it's ready to move on to step two to calculate our critical t. So for the one sample t-test, our degrees of freedom is just n minus one, and our critical t is going to be the formula t inverse two-tailed. We put in our probability, which is alpha, comma, enter our degrees of freedom, close parentheses, enter. So here we have our critical value of t. And recall that critical values of t, there's a plus and a minus there. So it could be, we're equally concerned with sample values that are out here in the negative extreme or out here in the positive extreme. In this case, negative 1.96 standard deviations or less, or positive 1.96 standard deviations or more on the sampling distribution. So step three is where things start to get fun, I think. So our goal here is to calculate our sample t statistic. But as a stepping stone, I think it's good to break this down into parts and to calculate the standard error first. And our formula for standard error is just the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n minus one. So equals s divided by square root, hit tab to select it, and n minus one is just our degrees of freedom. So I can just click that there, close parentheses. So we have s over square root of n minus one, enter. Now our sample t is just the number of standard deviations that are separating values. And what are the values? Well, we have our x bar, our sample, and we have the population mean for Canada. So let's do that. And we have to make sure we do parentheses for order of operations here. So we have x bar minus mu. And that whole entire thing is divided by the standard error right here. Enter. So what this is telling us is that there are, the sample value is 48.61 standard deviations away from the population mean of Canada. So if Canada is at 3.8, if this is the middle of the distribution right here at 3.8, if we were the same as Canada, we would expect 95% of sample means to be in this area here, plus or minus 1.96 standard deviations. But the sample that we got of 8.24, this is 48.61 standard deviations away from the mean. We are way out in the positive tail of the distribution. So our fourth step is to formally compare these two numbers. So we're comparing our critical statistic and our sample statistic, and we're going to make a decision. And what I've said in the fourth step up above is to type in a formula that will do this so that you can use this regardless, and this will automatically tell you um, the result of your hypothesis test. Do you go with your null hypothesis, or do you go with your research hypothesis? So the way to do this, you can say, we're gonna go with space, quote, and the way you can catenate or paste things together is with the ampersand. So we're gonna go with, which one are we gonna go with? Are we gonna go with the research hypothesis or the null hypothesis? Well, this depends on if our sample statistic exceeds our critical statistic or not. So what we can do, we can use the if function so if, and what is our logical test? We want to say if our, let's use the absolute value here. This is fine in this case, but in other cases, um, if it's a negative t or a positive t, you know, it, this number here won't pick that up. So let's make a more general case just for now. If the absolute value of our sample statistic exceeds the absolute value 
of our critical statistic. That's our condition. If that is the case, then we want to output h1. So what they're saying is that if this is the case, if our sample statistic is greater than our critical statistic, then we're going to go with h1, comma. Or else, if it's not, we're going to go with h0, our null hypothesis. Close parentheses and hit enter. So in this particular case, as we said before, this 48 is bigger than this 1.96, so we're going to go with our research hypothesis. And what is our research hypothesis? We can simply just reference this cell right here. So we can conclude that on average Americans differ from Canadians in terms of how many cookies they leave out for Santa. And if we ever reject a null hypothesis, we should always state the chance that we're wrong. We could have gotten, null hypothesis could be true, but the sample is so many standard deviations away from what we would expect if the null hypothesis was true. Remember, this is a probability distribution. The probability of having something that's 48 standard deviations away from the mean is very, very low. And for this hypothesis test, we have said that the probability of us being wrong is going to be less than 0.05. I won't write out the hypotheses. Um, you can see them on the answers. So the only thing that really differs here is, for example, for this one, Americans differ from Mexicans in terms of how many cookies they leave out for Santa. And we would have Mexicans copy, paste, Okay, so you can see all I've done here is I've changed in this one. Here we had Canadians, here we have Mexicans. Okay, and this is, these are the same except for the difference between Canadians and Mexicans. These are the same except for the difference between Canadians and Mexicans. All of our numbers here are going to be the same. The only thing that's going to be different, recall all of this is based on our sample data. Okay, so this is our sample size, it's going into this number, our sample size and our standard error is based on our sample size and our sample standard deviation, but our sample t-value is the difference between the sample mean and our population mean of interest. Okay, and in this particular case we're dealing with 8.4 instead of 3.8. So that is going to change in our formula. One thing we can do here with this one is to make these references here to B16, we can hit F4 when we're clicked on the B16. I can hit F4 to lock it. And we don't want to lock this one, because so we're going to copy it to the right. And this B33, the standard error, that's the sample information, it's going to be the same. I'll hit F4 to lock it. Okay, so these are going to be locked. This one is free to be copied over to the right, and it's going to change. Um, it'll be a relative reference. Okay. So now when I copy this over here, I can see that now I'm comparing in green up here, Mexico. Escape to get out of that. Over here I was comparing in green up here, Canada. And the same thing here when copying this over. So this is if our sample statistic exceeds our critical statistic, we want this to be moving over, because this is changing. But this is not changing. This is just dependent upon the sample characteristics. So we don't want to change B30. So I'm going to click on B30, and I'm going to lock it with F4. Now you can see the usefulness of here, right here. I'm going to copy this over, and it's going to tell us right away in this particular case here, is this value greater, is it beyond our critical statistic? 
No, we're only 1.74 standard deviations away from the mean. The difference between Mexico and our sample from the US. So we're going to go with H0, our null hypothesis. For Nigeria, we can see that we're 2.63 standard deviations away from the mean, which is greater than our critical statistics. We're going with our research hypothesis. So in this case, I can say go with our null hypothesis. And for the other ones, if I had written out our hypotheses here, I would reference those cells there. This one would be for Nigeria, and this one would be for Switzerland. Now the last point, and this is the really interesting thing that connects confidence intervals to the one sample t-test, is to note that values within the confidence interval are non-significant. What do I mean by that? So our confidence interval was we were 95% certain that the average number of cookies that people in the US leave out for Santa is between 8.06 and 8.42. If these values are between 8.06 and 8.42, like this one and this one, then they are going to be non-significant. Okay, this is a non-significant difference between the US and Mexico. It's a non-significant difference between Switzerland. And we can play with these numbers to see that. We can say that if we get a number that's really close to the bottom end, let's say I go to 8.0. 0, 07 for Switzerland. Let's say that was the number. And I hit enter. We're 1.86 standard deviations away. Okay, we're really close to our t value in this particular case. But if I chose a value that was 8.05, this is outside of our interval, right? So this is now a difference. It's 2.08 standard deviations away from the mean compared to our critical threshold of 1.96. So now we are going to be making a statistically significant statement saying that the US and Switzerland differ in the number of cookies that people leave out for Santa. So that's the relationship between confidence intervals and the one sample t-test. If you have a value of the population mean that you're seeing whether this value is coming from, if they're the same or different, if this confidence interval, if you happen to calculate that, you're effectively saying that if this value falls within the 95% confidence interval, it's a non-significant relationship between these variables. And if it does not, if it's a number like 9, you can see that we would go with the research hypothesis. So that's how to do a one sample t-test in Microsoft Excel. The same procedure follows for the one-tailed t-test, except that you would use the formula for the one-tailed t.